myself, Apostle Dave, and we got a special guest, Pastor uh, Earl. He's been on all night. We begged him to come back tonight. Uh, I thank you, Pastor, for joining us. And I, I wanted these two special men to join me tonight because I want to talk about something extremely important, leadership. What is leadership and why are we leaders? And what does it take to be a leader? Let me start with this. If you're not willing to risk the unusual, you will not have anything to settle but for the ordinary. Now watch this. In the word, that's changing really quickly. The only strategy that we have is guaranteed is to fail because we're not taking risk. I know ships are safe and they're when they're in a harbor, but when they're not, the ships, uh, but what the ships are for is they easily take risk. For an example, we should take chances on not the stock market, but we should take chances on people. The best risk to take is let somebody else risk to the, rise to the occasion. So we will invest in the people for leadership. If we'll invest in the people uh, as, a, as a risk, if you will, that they will understand their role in leadership and their influence. Proverbs 3, 27 and 28 is obligation. And I want to show you this. The opportunity to do good imposes obligation to do it. So if you're going to do good, you're obligated. It's implying that we have been favored when the opportunity to serve that matters arises. We're not merely, not only that it's convenient or when we're, uh, it contributes to our fame, but it, we should do this when we have the opportunity, no matter how often it occurs and how much self-denial it takes. So to do good, it doesn't have to build our fame or our way up or our ego. It's to do good at the expense of others to help them, no matter what it takes. So let's get into the leadership role so we kind of have an idea what our part as leaders is to serve others is the basic part. But to look at a leader, and I'll start with the apostle, lead by position rather, by, uh, lead by position rather than relationship. In other words, we should always lead by relationship, not by the position of who we are. We should look at, uh, stop looking at the, uh, look past rather than look at you. In other words, we don't look past who they are. We have to start with them then and there. Now, we can see the future of what the future leadership is, but we have to pay attention to get them there as they take them from where they're at. Don't um, express, uh, we have to be careful to look for gratitude. It's very important that we're humble and we're grateful to the people that we have around us. Now, here's another one. So many times we've been called to speak or preach or uh, share, and we sit in the green room instead of connecting with the people. That just irritates me to no end. Instead of, you know, we should be out with the people. We should be there to encourage everybody. At Vision TV, the two of them, the biggest leaders here, they're always encouraging the people. It's not about them being on set. It's more important for them to be offset to encourage others. And the last one, and I'll start with you, Apostle. Use the people to build the ministry rather than the ministry to build the people. In other words, we should be building the people instead of the ministry. The ministry is the people. Your thought, Apostle, on how to be a leader and what we should be looking for. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, when Jesus was teaching the disciples about leadership, he taught them that the greatest would be a servant. And, and when you step into a role of leadership, I believe that our, our view, our um, view towards uh, leadership should be servanthood. Yes. You know, we sh we should uh, you know want to serve and want to uh, help other people like you like what you were sharing. But a lot of times, you know, people uh, they're reluctant, they hesitate mm -hmm. because fear creeps in. That's right. But I love how um, God spoke to Joshua. You know, Joshua was the next man to be raised up. He was going to be a great leader, a leader over all of God's people. And God spoke to Joshua and told him to be strong and courageous. So we need to be strong and courageous when it comes to leadership, when it comes to serving people and helping mm, people. Good. You know, another thing is that when God spoke to King David or uh, David, when, you know, when he shared about being a king and a leader, and a leader, 
He said a king should be just. That's good. You know, and so so the thing is, is that we need to serve. We need to be people that are just, that are that are that, that show kindness. Yes. But we also need to be strong and courageous. Amen. To minister yes. to to different types of people. You know, what I mean, well, we got to step out of our comfort zone right. to help people out. That's really good, Pastor. Do you? I'll give five more thoughts and, I, and help me with this leadership. So many leaders pray, play favorites. There is no favorites. I know in James 2.19 it says we show no favoritism or there is uh, Acts 10.38. There is no favoritism. Uh, the seventh thought is leaders put themselves in the spotlight. That is another thing that irks me. We should strive for others to be in the spotlight. It's not about me hosting this it's more about what these men of God bring to the subject to encourage you to where they came from to pull you out where your calling is. Leaders only do ideas even if there's better ideas on the table. In other words, we have to stop what the idea is. Whoever's got the best idea, that's the one we should go for. It's not the person that's leading, even though it's great that leaders do lead, but we have to be open to be corrected. We have to be open to be humble. The ninth one is leaders make others smaller to make themselves look bigger. That's crazy. The idea is Jesus said the biggest servant is the greatest leader. Yeah. So don't discourage. We have to always encourage others to move in their calling and gifts. And the last one is micromanagement. I can't tell you how that drives me. We, it, we have to have enough room for everybody to move in their anointing in their lane. Yes. Think about it. We're all different. How can I tell these men how to minister, how to move in their gifts when their gifts are different than mine? So they can't all fit in my gifts. That's what I do. That's what They do something differently. That's what makes a, a complete body. That's why it's the fivefold. Your thought, Pastor, on that thought. Well, I mean, we're, we are all uniquely made in the image of Christ. I mean, no two people are the same in the entire world. The DNA science has proved when they do it through the DNA yes. and blood testing that everyone is unique. So everyone is uniquely made in the image of God. And when you're trying to become someone God didn't make you to be, you're going to struggle and you're going to mm. fail and you're going to doubt. But when you can understand and embrace who God's made you to be, the gifting he's giving you, the the ways that you can do it because that's how he has designed you to be mm. when you get in as you would describe that's your lane your lane is when you are right where the gifting that god's given you the ability the ways how you think and you go with that and when you're like i say when you're trying to imitate someone else it just miserably mm. fails that is so good well done pastor so how do we help leaders become great by Lead by example. So many times we should lead the people to encourage them by being humble of how they should be uh, encouraged in their gift. Give away the credit for whoever it's, uh, that wins. In other words, whoever is speaking or whoever's idea or whatever, give them the credit. It's, it's all God anyway. But encourage them in what they are doing. Third is lead by serving others. I think that speaks for itself. Fourth is keep their word. I can't tell you how many leaders we've had at Vision TV that are, that are coming to preach and encourage and train and equip the people and they're not it, it doesn't seem like they worry about the time or they speak over their time or they come in later or whatever we have to keep our word and never stop growing or learning I can't say that enough would you say uh, Apostle that's one of the biggest ones never start learning never stop growing amen you know I've heard um, a leader's a reader amen and I believe that is that uh, we should never stop growing you know um when jesus was teaching his disciples he was always teaching them to grow you know and as a leader we should never stop growing you know mm. uh, god has called us to develop he's he's called us uh to learn you know and you know that's where we have the word of god is that he's called us to be scholars of the word, uh, to understand the word, to develop. You know, the word of God says when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide yes. you into all the truth. So the Lord will give you direction. He'll give you guidance. Uh, he'll bring people into your life. You know, uh, he'll give us counsel, but we should always be in the position of 
having yes. a desire to go to the next level. I think it's very dangerous uh, when we think we've arrived. Yes. You know, uh, that could be even pride uh, settling in. But if we stay in a position of humility and, and understanding that we, we, we always have to grow, and then also, you know, uh, positioning yourself around other That's great good. leaders. You know what I mean? That's why I'm blessed to be out here in Vision TV with, uh, you know, Dr. Ken and with the pastor here is that these are men of God, mature men of God, where um, I could grow from them. Amen. And many other people that, we, you know, you come around, the Bible says iron sharpens iron. That's good. Amen. So we, the, the thing is, is that we never want to get into the comfort zone. We should always uh, put ourselves in a position to grow. Sometimes mm -hmm. we might get like a little tired, a little weary because, yes, you know, leadership's not easy. Take a break, but come back into that position to grow. Amen. That is really good. And we grow as much with, from speaking with apostles as we do with each other and others that are here. I just thank God how humble they all are, and, and they're really open to learn. But what I learn more from them than anybody around here. But I will say this. That's why, because we ask great questions. The other thought is we spend more time listening than talking. Another thing we do is we're confident in God's call in our life. We don't try to get in everybody's lane. Whoever's lane it is, that's the one that's speaking. That's who we're listening to. Make everybody better. That's what it's all about. Who can we make better than before? Who's yes. speaking better than before? Who's the cloud yes. over? That's who's speaking. Loyalty, that's really big here. Amen. Accountability, we're really big, the three of us on accountability. We demand others on Vision TV to be accountable to each other yes. and encourage each other to walk the same way they walk here as they do when they leave the shows and find the best idea whether it's theirs or not. That is so key. Pastor, your thought, because I know you're big on uh, promoting everybody and giving everybody a leg up and you want to mentor everybody and help everybody. Your thought on how you do it. Well, I think, I think that, that you have to lead by example. Yes. If you, you know, if you look at Jesus, I mean, what was he doing? He spent his life training the 12 That's disciples. Good. I Amen. mean, he... He was pouring himself into them because he knew he was going to die. He knew he was going to leave them, so he had to prepare them mm. for the mission and the plan that God had for them that they had to carry out. And so now these guys who, who on the surface look like they could never do much of anything yes. end up being guys who changed the world. When there was mm, no good. media, there was no yes. They got the gospel out all mm -hmm. over the world when it made no sense illogical but jesus lived it for them i mean he showed them how to rest he showed them how to pray That's he it. showed them how to handle stress when he's sleeping on the boat in the middle of the storm mm. i mean he is just showing them how yes. to do everything that comes up in life they were watching everything he did and the truth is they probably didn't do that great of a job of it why he was alive that's good but you know what? When they really did the great job was when he died. Mm -hmm. So he prepared them. He taught them. He trained them so that when all of a sudden he's crucified, he rises from the dead, he now comes and visits them in spirit for 40 days before he then goes up to heaven, and then now they go to Pentecost. Well, he was preparing them the whole time, yeah. and he was putting all of these things into their minds and heads that they actually didn't even understand till later. And if you even look at the gospel messages with Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, those were written 20 to 30 years after Jesus died. That's they it. did not write those right away because they didn't understand all that he was teaching them, all he was training them. And I believe that's what great leaders do. They're training, they're ingraining, they're living out the example. They're showing the people what to do. They're encouraging them to where sometimes they don't even realize what they're learning. But then when that person's gone, now they can take it. Now they can live it out. And now you're going to see that person actually coming out in their life. Yes. Well said. That's well done. What do we know the difference between a master and a beginner? The master has failed more times than the beginner has ever tried. That's the difference. Where is that at? Luke 12, 48. One of my favorites. To him much is given, from him much is required. Your thought, Apostle. Praise the Lord. Um, 
you know, as as being a leader, you know, I believe that, you know, when Jesus, when he was ministering to his disciples, he empowered his disciples. And I believe as a leader, uh, we should have a vision of the people that we're working with going to the next level. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people, um, you know, there's some people out there that they work with people, but they just keep the people under them. That's true. But I love, you know, what the pastor was sharing is that Jesus knew that he was going to ascend up. So he empowered his disciples to be the ones that were going to do his work, that were going to uh, take that role of leadership. You know, and I believe that God has called us to leave a legacy, to uh, leave an inheritance for God's people. That's what Joshua did, is that Joshua positioned God's people, and he positioned them into their inheritance. And I believe a great leader will believe in people. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's why, you know, uh, I like bragging about Dr. Ken, because being around him, he believes in the people. You know, I see him encouraging people and ministering to people and saying, man, you could do this, you know. And that's what makes a great leader is that you're coming from a place of love. Hallelujah. You're coming from a place of authority. You're coming from a place that you're encouraging people, but you're empowering them, and you really want to see them get blessed. Amen, amen. There's some people that they just brag, and they're like, you know, God wants to raise you up, but they really don't want to see those people get blessed you know what i mean sure. but the thing is is that i believe a good leader really wants to see god's people blessed really wants to see god's people empowered really wants to see god's people positioned really want to, really wants to see god's people raised up yes. healed delivered doing a great thing for god you know and i believe that's uh one of the greatest uh Things of being a leader are one of the greatest results. Mm -hmm. The success of being a, a leader is seeing your disciples raised up, seeing your disciples prosper, seeing your mentors uh, uh, build up, become successors, become even greater than you. I, I really believe that's what a good leader is, is when you see your disciples become greater than you. Amen? Amen. Powerful word, sir. About leading, I want to give you a three tips real quick criticism if you lead to change lives you won't be criticized but if you can't take criticism don't lead L uh, let's learn to control the conversation by guarding our heart and controlling our tone so many times when we talk we maybe get a little too excited maybe we're uh, discouraged maybe we've had a bad day but we watch our heart and control our tone However, we're leading the conversation. It will be uplifting and encouraging to others. A soft answer turns away anger, but grievous words stir up anger. Proverbs 15.1. This one goes out to my friend and prophet Wanda. Silence. Something that is best as an example of Jesus' silence during one of his trials. A man, in Proverbs 11.12, a man understanding holds his peace. This woman prays for us, encourages us. She comes on every taping. But when she comes on this side of the camera, she explodes. She has so much wisdom, so much power, but she knows how to be silent. When she's called, it's her time to give God's word. And prayer, of course, is the multitude of words of, of, uh, words of sin that is not always lacking, but who restrains his lips is wise. In other words, in Proverbs 10, 19, if we have so many words that maybe we should have said, we shouldn't have said, but if we're wise, we'll control our tongue and watch what the words come out of it. But, Pastor, your thought on how it's so important to control our words, especially when we're talking to others to encourage them to their next level. Well, I mean, if we believe the Scriptures, we know that the power of life and death is in the tongue. Yes. And so what that's really saying is whether it's your spouse whether it's your kids, whether it's the people that are working underneath you, people at church, whatever mm -hmm. that is, when you're speaking, you're making a choice every time you speak. You're either raising people up and speaking life into them, or you're trying to push them down and speaking death into yeah. them by pushing them down. You know, and and one good. thing that struck me also was, you know, as you were talking about 
I mean, the ultimate compliment to a leader is, to me, when he has raised up people around him that go beyond where he went yeah. to. That's it. That's it. Yes. But, Good word. But here's the problem. What stops leaders from doing that? Mm. Fear. That's good. Fear. Nothing more than Good fear. Word. And if you're going to awesome. tell me that fear is from the Lord, I'm going to say you don't know the scripture. Fear is always from the enemy. Amen. The fear of the Lord is, is about an awe, about understanding who God yes. really is. But when you're afraid that someone is going to get ahead of you, when you're afraid that someone is going to get more money than you have, when you're afraid of something, That's good. you're only empowering the enemy. And you're bringing death into your own business, into your own ministry, into your own relationships, into your own whatever it is that you're doing. Because when you're operating out of fear, you're just opening the door for the enemy to bring torment, to bring destruction, to bring doubt. But yet when you're walking in faith, when you're trying to raise people up beyond yes. who you are, whatever that is, your kids, ministry, whatever, yes. you're now walking in faith, trusting in God that God's ways are oh, higher good. than your ways mm. because man's ways is I'd rather be a dictator and keep everyone suppressed under my thumb wow. so yes. I can control them. Yes. But control is just a form of fear. Yes. And when all of a sudden we can let go of the fear, wow. let go of the control, let go of all those things and the lies of the enemy, now we can empower people. And yes. when they see us walking in faith, when they see us speaking life into them, mm. yes. they can now do that to others. Well done. Well done. Now, we're halfway through our program. I want to encourage you with this. If the two will allow me to lay a little groundwork, I want to talk next about the prophet and parts. These two men are extremely prophetic. What is the prophet? It's the messenger. I believe tonight, before this is all said and done, in the next 15 minutes as we lay the groundwork of going back and forth, these two men will start praying for your breakthrough, whether it be financially, physically, emotionally, deliverance, whatever it is, they will speak prophetically in your life to show you God is speaking through you and he cares about each and every one of you, about your call and the leadership ability that you have. So let me lay the groundwork. God is magnificent, obviously, and his children, sons or daughters, it doesn't matter, as he is, so are we in this world. First John 4, 17 in the New King James. So all that said is because his glory, his excellence, he has given us great precious promises, that's in the word, and in those are the promises that enable us to share his divine nature, Second Peter 4, 1. Let me finish with this last thought. Because God works through men, men must ex uh, exert themselves in order to do God's will. Only God gets the credit. So when these men go off in their words and encouragement, their prophecies, they're here to encourage you with uh, God's divine order and what they have them say. Now, God gives us the ability, the inspiration, and the strength. He opens up the doors. He supplies the manpower, the money, the resources to go through these doors. He supplies all the favor to open those doors. Another thought I had is God wants every single person to be a prophet. Where do I see that at? Remember, Moses said, are you jealous for my sake? Oh, that all the people of the Lord were prophets. They are the ones who would put their spirit upon them. Numbers 11, 29. In other words, Moses says the spirit of the Lord is upon you. He it is. If your spirit feels, his spirit's on you. Now, when we use this term prophecy, it simply means to hear the voice of God. You see where I'm going with this? And speak the words to others. So we should be able to have the heart. This should be the heart of every single leader. So, um, Apostle, to you, if we are going to be uh, prophets and inspiring, inspirational, maybe giving, uh, laying hands on them, imparting gifts or anointing or whatever it is, the ability of their prophets to impart blessings to others, how do you see, in fact, I'll give you uh, what Paul said in Romans 1.11. Paul said, for it's long for you to see that I may impart to you some spiritual gifts so you may be strengthened. Your thought on the prophetic word as you often so give at vision. Amen. I, I believe that there's two types of prophets. Amen. There's the prophet of the Lord and then there's the false prophet. Amen. And the Bible says that you'll know a false prophet by their fruits. Uh, fruits talking about 
you know, their character, work. you know, um, their actions, what are they doing? Uh, just like Dr. Kent said, and I come in agreement, is that God uh, is, is calling all of us to operate in the prophetic. But if we're going to operate in the prophetic, then we have to do it the right way. And in order to operate in the prophetic, we need to be in God's word. Amen. If, if you're not in God's word, then how are you going to prophesy? You know, I, I believe, amen, yes, the Holy Spirit could come upon you and you could uh, share a word. But if you really want to operate in a prophetic gift, you need to be in your word. Amen. Like, you know, hanging out with these men of God, um, Dr. Ken, he, he, you know, he, he shoots out verses and he knows the verses amen and chapters and and it's, and it's so powerful amen to hear him speak the word and then you go into the word and you're like wow that's that's exactly where he said it's at but we must know god's word we must Hallelujah. know yes. the counsel of god in other words you got to get your bible again amen open up your bible that's good start studying the word and start praying and then you you wait till you you feel it in your heart you feel the nudge of the Holy Spirit speak to you. And you might have a word for somebody, but yes. the word of God says that we prophesy in part. Amen. The Bible says that one plants, another waters, but God brings the increase. Wow, that's good. Amen. So if God has called you to prophesy, then you must stay connected to the source, which is God. And you connect with God through communication, through your prayer life, but also through the word of God. Amen. Yes. And and God will use you to share to people. Amen. But there's also other people that might not be in the word, that might be compromising, that might be caught up in sin, and 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 they might say, Hey, well, this is what God said. So you gotta have discernment. Amen. Uh there's also a gift that God gives. I'm just going to say this. The Holy Spirit gives you a gift of discernment. And all discernment is, is just, you know, you're figuring it out. You're, you know, you see somebody that's coming at you and yes. you just know that's not right. Amen. So, so what I'm saying is that just like Apostle Paul said, is that we need to learn how to walk in the spirit. That's it. We need to walk in the spirit because when you walk in the spirit, you're going to be able to understand the things of the Spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. Good word. First Timothy 4.14, Pastor, to you, do not elect the gift that is in you, which was given to you by prophecy, with laying on the hands by the elders. Something to think about, a lot of these men do, is impart gifts, encouragement, praying for healing, anointing, going through things, you know, everyday life. Uh, this was a transference of spiritual power, authority, ability, grace. Paul told Timothy he received by impartation. We use this impartation of the anointing. We receive it directly from God or other individuals from God. Uh, in other words, God gives the individual the encouragement as the other feels the, uh, the born-again believer that has an additional anointing by laying on hands or prophesying over the people into their destiny and calling or whatever they're lacking. But pastor to you, if we're uh, prophetically speaking in them, the sharp discernment that you talked about or radar, the discernment in the Greek actually is to separate thoroughly, oppose, uh, contend, doubt, yes. and judgment. Yes. I, I want to show you that we, and to decide, I, I want to show yes. you that uh, if our discernment is to is internal war that grapples with, uh, and it has to line up with the word of cars, and uh, we have to perceive uh -huh. that God is the one that's offering this discernment and showing us maybe a fault, um, maybe there's a red flag, maybe you should stop. Mm -hmm. uh, th there's all kinds of different discernments, but if you'll pay attention to this unction inside you yes. to understand that this prophetic point is going off, mm -hmm. it's like, in Hebrews 5.15, it's like solid food belongs to those who are mature, those who practice with powers of discernment that have been trained to distinguish good from evil. That's the point. Pastor Earl, your thought on the prophetic as we look at either discernment or laying hands on others to impart uh, encouragement or spiritual gifts. Well, I, I feel like, you know, 
the prof let me see. I want to say this a little differently. So everybody hears from the enemy. So Satan is talking to you with, with the negative side over here. That's talking to everybody. God is talking to everybody. The world and the people around you are talking to, to us, and then we're talking with ourselves. Yes. And so if you're not understanding which voices you're listening to, and if That's you're good. not discerning and understanding what you're hearing and then testing what you're hearing against the Word of God, you're going to go in the wrong direction. So you've got all these people that are, you know, all over now doing, doing um, mind reading, doing tarot cards, wow. doing all these different things out there. Well, you know what? They're prophetic. But they're prophetic listening to the enemy. Mm. They're not prophetic listening to God. And so as you are That's good. in the Word, as you're studying yes. the Word, as you're surrounding yourself with the thoughts of God, yes. you're now tuning in on what He's saying. And so the prophetic words that we want to give are what the Holy Spirit is telling us. Yes. What we're hearing from God, what we're hearing in the Word, yes. what we're hearing. And so when something comes that's negative, something comes that's mm -hmm. off, I have to be able to go, I reject that in that's Jesus' right. name. Yes. Otherwise, I'm going to go around and I'm going to speak death into people when I think I'm speaking life. Okay. I'm going to give them a prophetic word that might actually be from the enemy, wow. and he's using me as a tool of destruction into someone's life when I think I'm being led by God, uplifting someone's life. So mm -hmm. we have to be very, very careful and discerning of being in touch with who we're listening to, knowing what we're listening to, and how we're doing it, and then discern that before we speak it into someone. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we can really do a lot of damage, and that's very clear in Scripture. You know, and I, and I, just, I just like reading in... in John 14, 12, mm -hmm. most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also, and the greater works than these oh. he will do because I go to my Father. But, you know, those greater works, sometimes we just think it's one or two things. Sometimes we just think it's healing. Sometimes we just think, no, it's everything Jesus did. Jesus was absolutely prophetic, speaking life into those around him. He absolutely prayed for people and they were healed. He, actually, he encouraged yes. people. He did all these things. And we're to do greater things yes. than he did, not because we're greater. It's because of who's in us and what he's done, how he's gone to the Father, had the Holy Spirit come down to now if we accept Jesus and now we decide to live for him. Mm. So we have to not just accept Jesus, but we have to make the choice to say, I need to understand I've been bought with the price of his blood. Yes. Mm -hmm. And now, because I've been bought with the price of his blood, I need to now live for him. Yes. And the choices I'm going to make yes. are going to be living for him, not of this world. Amen. And then it's going to change yes. what I'm going to speak. It's going to change the prophetic, what comes out of my mouth, how I see it, and awesome. the vessel I can be and how God can use me. Well done. So you're, what you're saying is uh, 1 Corinthians 14, 31, we all can prophesy. Second thought, 1 Corinthians 14, 3 says, as the prophet, your words mean to edify, exhort, and comfort. So that's the key that pastor is talking about. Carry spiritual weight to the words, manifesting, correcting. Correcting is a big point, but you have to do it in love. They say, don't judge others. I want to say one thing real quick. We aren't supposed to judge others, but doesn't Jesus judge and he says you will rule and rage and judge others with me now why is it what, what is the difference why yes. can we judge one time we can't judge the other we judge as how he does it in love so we would correct in love we wouldn't judge them say don't do that we would say is that the pro you know is that the right way is that the way to say that or could we say it this way it's very interesting how the prophets the authentic prophet carries the heart of the father 
apostle to you as well as the sword of the spirit hebrews 4 12 it says and i'm uh in the passion translation you'll love this it says for we have the living word of god which is full of energy it pierces more sharply than a two-edged sword it even pierces the very core of our being so to you apostle it interprets and reveals the thoughts and secret motives of our heart your thoughts Amen. It, it, it all goes back to the Word of God. You know, I, I saw this movie, you know, it was the last King Arthur, King Arthur I believe. The King that's Arthur. It, that's a good one. And um, it ministered to me so much because it was about this man that discovered he was a king by finding a sword. And when he embraced the sword, it was really the sword that was embracing him. That's it. And through, through the whole process, he had a problem with his identity because he had a rough upbringing. And, um, but when he found that sword, every time he had that sword in his hand, it reminded him who he was. That's it. That he was a king. But it was to that last point where he was in, in one of the most biggest battles of his life that he dropped the sword and, 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 and in this movie he had a vision and the vision was that his father appeared to him which was the father was actually the king before him and the father you know he died yes. in the movie but he appeared to him in a vision and he puts the sword in his son's hands and he, and he tells his son the sword is yes. yours son see that ministered to me because god has given us something and that's his word and the bible says that it's the sword of the spirit um but you got to understand what the sword of the spirit is because you have the word of god which is the written word the written word is the grapho the grapho word but then you have the abiding word. And Jesus said in order for us to be a disciple that we are to have the abiding word. That we are to abide in his word. The abiding word is the living word in us. So it's not just the word in the Bible, but it's the word that is inside of us. It's the word that changes us. It's the word that we memorize and it's the word that we speak. The word that we speak is the rhema word. And the rhema word is the spoken word. And when you speak the spoken word, you're actually using the sword. And I want to say this to people out there that you, you, know, you might feel that God is calling you to prophesy. Amen. Is that if you want to prophesy with authority, I want to, I want to just share it to you like that movie King Arthur. Is that the sword is yours. Amen. God has given you the sword, and the sword is the word of God. Amen. And I encourage you to step into your destiny. Matter of fact, I want to I want to share this, Doctor Ken, is that in the last days it says that in the book of Joel and in the book of Acts that God will pour out His Spirit. Amen. And that your sons and your daughters will prophesy. It even says that even the babes will praise the Lord. Amen. Mm -hmm. So I believe that we're living in a time where God is going to bring another wave of glory. Amen. Mm -hmm. Almost like a Zeusa street where God is going to pour out his spirit in an uncommon way. And we're going to see people begin to prophesy like the, the man of God said yes. here is that if, the, if, if, if it's going to be a prophecy from God then we're going to discern it we're going to feel it we're going to know that it's not from the enemy we're going to know that it's a word coming from heaven but I'm excited because I believe that God is going to use our children. He's going to use people out there that the Bible says that the spirit of God is going to come upon all flesh. Amen. So you might have some sinners up in that room that might start prophesying. Amen. King Saul was not right with God when he was pursuing King David. But he entered into a realm where there was prophets. Yes. And the Bible said he began to prophesy. So when the Spirit of God 
falls, I believe there's going to be an outrage of prof prophecy, amen, where people are going to begin to prophesy. And I believe we're entering into that season right now. Good word. As we only got 15 minutes, I want to close with the last thought and let Pastor get the last word. And the last 10 minutes, I want to release these two powerful men yes. of God to give prophetic words to you to encourage you to where you're at, whether it be financially, emotionally, or physically. The prophet, you deliver the word, that's what they'll do of the Lord. It's lined up with his word, and it'll leave his mark. Let me explain that. Jesus said he did not come to bring peace, but a sword, Matthew 10, 34. Jesus is the word, so therefore his love wants to leave us a mark on us. Now watch this. He brings correction, division. He does not bring hatred, but rather he brings a great love, desiring us in a radical transformation and reformation. When our blade gets dull, we minister out of frustration. So it's very careful, as Pastor said, we have to watch when we get tired, we get uh, frustrated, that we recharge our batteries. What do we do? We go back to the blacksmith. Now watch this. I studied it out. It's in Isaiah. I don't have it in my notes. Forgive me. But who is the blacksmith? It's here at Marketplace and Authority where we are at Vision TV as the team, as me as yes. the spear. My last name is Smith. Now watch this. It's powerful. Oh, we get hallelujah. this word all the time. Hallelujah. Smith Wigglesworth. Smith was the first, shall be last. My last name is Smith. The last should be first. Can somebody give me an amen? amen. What I'm getting at is, is the team together. This is not me. This is the team. Since yes. I'm the spearhead yes. at Marketplace, the team Prophesy. around us Prophesy. together yes. will minister, will believe God, will resharpen re the word that's given to you. Yes. So therefore, God does not want us to destroy the people, but encourage them. Hallelujah. Your thought, Pastor, as we close. Well, I mean, you know, back to the word of God. So if Jesus, if we're to be conformed into the image of Jesus, and yeah. he is our example. So if you go to when Jesus was baptized, you go where now this, the dove comes upon him. The father says, okay, I, this is my son that I'm well pleased with. Now the Holy Spirit brings him out to the desert, into the wilderness. What does Satan do? Satan comes with scripture twice to wow. Jesus. Wow. So the enemy knows the Bible, yes. but he's not going to quote it accurately. He's not going to quote it to help and push forward the kingdom of God. Amen. So he comes with scripture to Jesus, Powerful. but twists it and gets it off. That's good. How does Jesus now counteract the attack of the enemy? How does he take the sword? Powerful. He now takes a scripture that's been twisted out yes. of context by Satan. He then takes and quotes out of Deuteronomy three separate times to accurately give the heart of God, the will of God, back to Satan. And now that's how he defeats Satan to where he finally says, flee, you know, go. And Satan has to leave. But he defeated him with the word of God. If knowing the word and accurately speaking the word mm. in the right context yes. is good enough for Jesus, it's good enough for me, yes. and it should be good enough for all of us. So we've got to know that word to good be word. really accurately because Amen. you're going to get bad words from all different mm. places where they're pulling scriptures taken out of context mm. distorted context Come in on. different ways and so if you don't understand and you're not discerning and don't understand in the spiritual sense you're going to get off and yes. ripped off yes. by the enemy good word now we only got 10 minutes and two and a half minutes each Let's all try to encourage, pray, prophesy what you believe God's telling you, Apostle, for the people out there, for their discouragement of maybe financial woes, uh, maybe they're ailing physically. What is God showing you to break this spirit over them that they're going through? Amen. You know, I, I just want to speak to somebody out there that you feel that you failed. You know, you've had a setback. You could have lost a job. You could have lost an opportunity. I just want to encourage you and let you know that God loves you and he's giving you grace right now. We serve a God of grace. 
And he's calling you back. Amen? He's That's calling it. you back. You know, Peter went out there and he failed. He went out there in his business and he, he went out there to catch fish. That was his money. But he failed. He fished all night. But he was discouraged. He, he just didn't fail. He was disappointed. He was discouraged. He was tired. He was burned out. Uh, he probably wanted to give up. But Jesus told him to go back. And he said, Lord, I've, I've already fished, but nevertheless, because of your word. See, it, it goes all back to the word of God. God's word is a good enough reason to make a comeback. God's word has enough authority to yield to it and to be obedient to it where God will give you success. And Peter said, you know, nevertheless, at your word, I will go back. Mm -hmm. And as he obeyed the voice of the Lord, the Lord gave him increase. He, he caught he caught so many fish, amen, that it, it, it provided for him and his family, his wife. And, and I just want to encourage you is that, I, I'm just going to say this, is that the Lord is calling you back. Make a comeback. And I believe that God will supply all of your needs. He will provide for you. He will help you. He will forgive you. He will strengthen you look at the prodigal son the prodigal son made a comeback and the father didn't reject the prodigal son he embraced the prodigal son and he restored the prodigal son i believe this is the season that god is going to restore you and bring success into your life if you come back to him good word i'll comment after that pastor your last thought in two and a half minutes or less you know we're, we're talking about the prophetic and for me, okay, I'm a project manager. I'm a logical guy. I know there's a lot of you out mm -hmm. there that you're, you know, you're common sense, you're thinking. And God has just shown me over and over again. He doesn't, he doesn't give me a prophetic word till it's like I step into the water. Wow. He does not show me things till I have to step out in faith. He doesn't show me something ahead of time so I can think about it and then I can create my own plan, put my own spin on it, do it my own way, and then try to take credit for it. He'll, when it comes to the prophetic, it only happens for me when I literally have to mm. let go of myself, mm. let go of my thinking, just step out, and then all of a sudden when the thoughts come in, then I will go with what comes into my mind. But at the same time, I'm also discerning to know that if something comes into my mind that does not line up with the Word of God, I'll reject that as a bad word. So will not, yes. I will not just let my mind go so I'm just an, an open vessel to be taken, listen to anything, yes. but I'm, I'll open my mind up to be able to God, God, what is it you want me to speak to this person? What is yes. it you want me to share with this person? And then when the thought comes in, I will stop, listen for a minute, and then, or however many seconds till I feel comfortable, then I'll speak it out. And that word needs to be encouraging. The other thing I want to say with the prophetic is there's times where he'll show me something really negative about someone, but he's showing that to me, and I have to now filter that because he doesn't want me just to speak negative into someone to speak death into them he'll show me that so that i know that what he wants is he wants to turn that into something positive so now what is on the other side of that sin that negativity that's usually where he wants to go and have me speak into that person Wow, that's powerful. Good yes. word. Let me close with this. We've only got a few minutes left. Uh, and I'll comment on both thoughts and give you my last prayer. Never do business alone. I think that's the answer as we're always looking. The disciples wander aimlessly at a time following the crucifixion of Christ. Isn't that how we feel sometimes when God 
go silent in our lives. Isn't that what's happening to you? You're in financial straits. Your health is not that good. Somebody has left you. Your job's not doing good. So the disciples went back to their business. We always go back to what we know. Hear me. It says, by night, as Apostle said, they caught nothing. John 23, 3. How many times have we gone back to our old life and caught nothing? We didn't get that new job. You know, the, uh, the people that left or our spouse left us because we went back to our old ways. Now watch this. Jesus appeared in the AM and helped the fishermen, but the disciples did not know it was Jesus. How many times people will speak into us and we didn't know it's the Lord speaking to us? Or how many times have we read that scripture and we said, that's where we're at, but we don't realize God has put us there? Aren't we like the apostles? We are appeared, but we don't know how to expect him. We're dictating how he'll come to us, how he should speak to us, how our circumstances can come about. Jesus asked, did you catch any fish? And of course, they said no. So throw the net on the right side of the boat, and you'll find some. Interesting, he sits on the right side of the Father. And the right side is of the authority side. So the right side is the right side. That is the right meaning. So we have to be on the side of right yes. where he is guiding yes. us. How many times do we get a thought a person calls us with a wonderful word? Or how about this? How many times we're able to bring up abundance of fish? That's what it says in John 21, 4, 6. Because so many were caught. That's what happened. They got abundance of fish because by his word, Luke 5, 5, on your word, I'll yes. do what you say. And his word always prospers. Hallelujah. Same thing, John 2, 7. Uh, the, uh, his mother said, uh, come and tell them what to do. And he says, woman, it's not my time. And she called them out. That's another thing. You're not calling out your influence. You're not calling out your, your uh, coworkers. You're not calling on your spouse to come up to the next level. You're not calling out the stranger at the gate. You're not calling out the business friends that you have or the people you're acquainting with. You're not calling them out to a higher level. The abundance of fish in modern times is a business opportunity or deals or people come into you at meetings. Now watch this. They caught 153, like the apostle said. What does 153 mean? It means sons of God. How many of us are calling the next generation into place? How many of us are encouraging others into their next destiny? How many of us are calling us into the purpose? God gives the purpose and up to us to follow the calling. How many people are calling us into the calling? So the final victory in the manifestation is the sons of God. We need people to call into their destiny. Jesus reminds us that we're continuing to depend on him on the need. The fishermen were skilled, as some of us are. We're great at talking. We might not understand what we're talking about, but if we'll learn the word of God, as the pastor said, now we can start talking in authority in his confidence and his authority. Now, be mindful of the previous independence. They were empty nets. They were sharp reminders. The dependence had to be on Jesus. So even in our strength, we must remain dependent and the provision of the Lord. Also, later in John 21, 22, Peter said, By the way, Lord, who betrayed you? Now watch this. He says, As for you, follow me. In other words, the scripture before says, What is that to you? The W-I-T-T-Y. It is witty. That means, what does it mean to you? And right after that, he says, For you, follow me. In other words, we have to stay in our lane. We're not looking at other things. It doesn't matter what everybody else is doing. What are we called to do? What are we supposed to speak into the people? I'm telling you by the Spirit right now, you are missing. It is a sin that you're not speaking the word of the Lord. You hear three voices, and I'll close with this. One last thought. We hear our voices, as the pastor said. That's the one we hear the most. We're always building ourselves up. We're as more confident than we should be. We think we know more than we really do. Second voice is the enemy denouncing Jesus. He really didn't say that. You're not called to anything. You're not going to go anywhere. You have plenty of time. He's not going to come to earth yet. And the last voice, it says in John 10, 27, you, the sheep will know my voice. If you spend time with them, you'll know what he's saying. That's the voice you have to listen to. The word of the Lord, John 2, 7, it will change your life. One word, just like John, or yes. Luke 5, 5, they caught all those fish. The sons of God, you're not calling into your destiny. You're not stepping into your influence. You're not calling people out of the pit into the promise. People are going to prison because you have not pulled them into the palace. Watch this. If you will give the word of the Lord, if you will encourage somebody, yes. you watch how their destiny will come. And for that, they will pull you to a higher level. Mm. Remember, everybody around you, in one, uh, one minute or less, 
Everything you need is within arm's reach. If you'll reach out and touch somebody and agree with them, you watch what the Word will do in your life. Until next week, I'm Dr. Ken, the pastor. Of course, the apostles bless will be all the bless time. You, bless we'll you. see you next week on Pastor's Amen. Talk. Praise the Lord. Amen.